Hello, fellow overcomers. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the I Am Podcast. Welcome to Identity School. Class is now in session. And just real quick, as of this recording, we are fast coming upon the uh, traditional Rosh Hashanah, the civic Rosh Hashanah, um, the civic Jewish New Year, which I can tell you is really not the real, is not God's New Year, because when you start to count, you don't start at seven, you start at one. But anyway, we're fast coming up on that, and then we're fast coming up on the uh, last great feast of the year, which means we're coming up on the great day. Ooh, wow. We're coming up on this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And when that happens, then do we start season two of the I Am podcast, and we start year two of Identity School. So if you are not caught up yet, get caught up on these podcasts, please. If there's still other podcasts to, uh, that happened after this one, by all means, don't let me stop you. Keep listening. Because we're going to make time after, you know, after the great feast, after the, uh, the Feast of Ingatherings. Yes, I, that's what I called it. You hear it called the Feast of Tabernacles. You hear it called Sukkot. But the first time the feast is mentioned in the book of Exodus, the first time the feast is mentioned, it's the Lord called it the Feast of Ingatherings. That's, that, 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 just like all the other feasts, is prophetic by name and by celebration. So let's not get, well, hmm, man, I, you know, I just love the feasts, okay? I really do just love the feasts um, and you know people people be like people be like oh well, that's Old Testament that's a law you wouldn't have to celebrate that no you don't have to celebrate it okay but if you're a believer if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior everything that you do should be done as unto the Lord there you go do it as unto the Lord so if you celebrate the feast do it as unto the Lord if you don't celebrate the feast, then do that as unto the Lord, okay? Um, but if you really want to be technical, if you really want to be biblical, to say that we're not supposed to celebrate the feast is not entirely correct. Especially, and I've taught this in Passover's past, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians, uh, you actually gave the com the command to celebrate Passover, okay? And uh, but we just celebrated differently. Well, hey, let's just get into to, to, to this lesson here, Isaiah chapter ten, verse twenty-seven. Now, to set this up here, to set this up here, um, this is Isaiah and prophesying. It's prophesying to uh, you know. To Israel, of course, and it was during one of those times when Israel was in bondage to Assyria. Um, Israel was in bondage to Syria because Israel, for a period of time, rejected the Lord. Okay, Israel, for a period of time, refused to obey the commandments of God in those, you know, in those days. So, therefore, it wasn't it wasn't God that put. It wasn't God that put him in, in in bondage. The Lord wouldn't do that. Okay. Um. The Lord wouldn't. The the the, the Lord wouldn't do that. Ah. Well, well, well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, we'll just do we'll just uh we'll just do this here. Okay? And the recorded part, we're going, you know, 
we'll just you know remove this all right all right all right we pray for Steve in the name of Jesus Christ we plead the blood of Jesus over Steve right now hallelujah I just thank you that Steve I just thank you that the, for working on Steve's heart right now that he will come to the kingdom he will co uh, come to to recognize Yeshua as Lord and Savior hallelujah for is your goodness that leads people to repentance father I don't know if I ever meet him in person but you have laborers already that you sent to sent him so thank you for sending those laborers across his path thank you for preparing his spirit I claim Steve's soul for your kingdom hallelujah Satan your assignment over Steve is finished right now in Jesus name it is done it is finished Yeshua told you 2,000 years ago it was finished. We rebuke you right now. It's time to go to dry and arid places. All right. All right. So, thank you. Th thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for, for demonstrating your love for Steve. Hallelujah. And... I just thank you that he receives, that, he, that he, he not only receives Jesus as Lord, but I thank you for leading them to a strong group of, strong group of brothers who will encourage him, who will love on him, and who will not judge him. Thank you for leading them to a church that is not a judgmental church, but a loving church. A church that loves him right where he's at, but loves him so much that they, that they only want to see the best for him. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You had you you pictured Steve when Lord Jesus, when you hung on the cross, you pictured Steve there. And if Steve was the only person that 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 needed that needed salvation, that needed deliverance, you would have you would have done it. You would have done it. In Jesus name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right. Well, now that we, you know, now that we got that, hallelujah. Okay. That's a little bit extra, uh, extra work I need to do in the, in the, in the edited uh, portion, maybe. No. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Okay? Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So, we're not going to be concerned about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for removing Steve's burdens and destroying the yokes on Steve. Thank you for doing that through, through, through your children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Okay. Okay, all right. Ooh, let's see, we got some challenges here. You know what? Now... Let's do this. We're going to go into the uh, into the book of Isaiah, chapter ten, and if I remember correctly, it is verse twenty-seven. Okay. Now, once again, once again, this was a, uh, you know, Israel's in bondage. Okay. The, t the ten separated tribes in this case not not the tribe not the two not the uh, two tribes you know the tribe of Judah okay and Judah this we'll talk about the ten we'll talk about the ten tribes okay and here here is what what the Lord spoke to Isaiah okay um you know I should I got it in the amplified classic but you know something I should take it in um in one of the translations that uh you know that has paragraphs. 
Okay. Um, let's start with verse 20. Let's start with uh, let's start with verse twenty. In that day, the remnant of Israel, the survivors of Jacob, will no longer rely on him who struck them down, but will truly rely on uh, on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. A remnant will return. A remnant of Jacob will return to the mighty God. Though your people be like the be like the sand by the sea, Israel, only a remnant will return. Destruction has been decreed, overwhelming and righteous. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, will carry out the destruction decreed upon the whole land. Now let's go to verse twenty-four. This is the NIV, by the way. I normally read the Amplified Classic, but this is the NIV. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the Lord Almighty says. My people who live in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrians. Who beat you with the rod and lift up a club against you as Egypt did. Very soon my anger against you will end and my wrath will be directed to their destruction. The Lord Almighty will lash them with a whip. As when he struck down Midian at the rock, at the rock of Oreb. And he will raise a sta his staff over the waters as he did in Egypt. In that day, their burden will be lifted from your shoulders. Their yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because you have grown so fat. All right. It and it keeps on going. It keeps on going like that. Now. Because your neck has grown so fat, okay, I can tell you that that fat it, it refers to animal fat, like oil, you know, like grease, like oil. I can tell you that. Okay, King James Version, King James Version. And it shall come to pass in that day. That his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There it is right there. Hallelujah. Now, we, uh, we uh, describe the anointing, you know, the, you know, the, the, define the anointing as from the original Hebrew and original Greek. And... That was part one and part two, so I would recommend you go back to that if you need, you know, if you, uh, you know, if you uh, need a refresher right there. But now, I want to, I'm going to do this old school, okay? Um, I'm going to go to the Strong's Concordance, and this is how I, this is how I learned stuff back in the day when I was starting, you know, when I when I was starting, you know, to really learn the scriptures, okay? So, so, uh, let's see here. I'm going to look at the word burden. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away. The word burden in Hebrew, um, transliter transliteration is pronounced Sobel Subal. Sobel Subal. Burden. Sobel Subal. And it comes from another word means a load, figuratively a burden. So it comes from it comes from a word sobel subal comes from a word and it literally means a load. Okay, that works. So let's see what else here. Let's see about this. Uh, let, let let's see about this load, shall we? Let's see about where this um where this um um uh, word derives from. H five four four five. Okay. H beep five four four five. Okay, so ball. So that word burden in Isaiah chapter ten derives from the word sabal, and it's a primitive root to carry, literally or figuratively, 
or reflexively to be burdensome. Specifically to be gravid. Gravid? Bear, be a burden, carry strong to labor. Okay. I've never heard of the word gravid before. G-R-A-V-I-D. I have never heard of the word gravid. Of the history of words that I've learned, never have I heard of the word gravid. So what does that word gravid mean? What does that word gravid mean? Let's see. Definition of gravid. G-R-A-V-I-D. Okay. G gravid. Put in the comments, please, if you ever heard of the word gravid or gravid. Or who knows? I might not even it might not even be pronouncing it uh correctly. G R A V I D. It's an adjective. Okay, so gravid is an adjective. G R A V I D. Carrying, developing young or eggs. Being with child, heavy with young, pregnant, fruitful, of animals as well as people. Oh, <gasps> similar, pregnant, and fruitful. I have never heard of the word gravid. Or it's actually pronounced gravid. Gravid. Let's see. What does it say? No, oh, gravid. I was right the first time. Gravid. It is synonymous with pregnant. Okay. And that's the next definition. Pregnant. Now used chiefly of egg laying animals or metaphorically. So. Let's go back to. Let's. Wow. Just. Okay, just wow. Okay. Okay. So the lo the burden the burden that shall be taken away from uh, shall be taken away from the shoulder comes from a root where it, it literally is a load. He's going to take the load off of the shoulder, but that word derives from a primitive root that essentially means pregnant. Hallelujah. So, this is weird. Now, when you're pregnant with something, you're supposed to carry a load. Okay? And it's supposed to come to fruition. That load comes to fruition. But, this is not that load. This tells me there's two different kinds of loads and there's two different kinds of burdens. Which tells me that not all burdens are bad. There's a time and a place. Just like Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time and a place for everything. So, there is a burden. A load, a burden we're supposed to bear. A load that we're supposed to carry. Okay, there is that burden. But it's a burden that comes from the belly. Okay, alright. It comes from inside, from within. From inside the belly. Now that burden, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that burden is a burden given by the Holy Spirit. It's placed inside of you by the Holy Spirit. And it's incumbent onto us to, to make that burden fruitful to give birth to whatever it is that the Holy Spirit placed inside of us. Those are good burdens. Those come directly from the Most High. But this burden that's upon the shoulder is a load and we're not supposed to carry everybody's burdens. Okay? Even in the New Testament, Paul, the Apostle Paul mentions that we, who are more spiritual, should help in removing of those burdens. Okay? So, praise the Lord. There's two different kinds of burdens. There is one burden... There is one burden that comes from the Lord, but he's not going to he's not going to place that burden. He's not going to place that burden on on your shoulder. He's going to place that burden inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But those burdens that are on the shoulders, 
The Lord said he's going to you know, one day he's going to remove them. That burden in that case was the bond was Assyria. Okay. That was that burden. But there are there are things that that uh we unfortunately still allow ourselves to be held bondage in and it's incumbent it's an, it, it, it really is incumbent um, on the you know on the body of Christ to assist to assist in removing those burdens hallelujah but there's a way to do that though there is a way to do that all right you don't do it without help you don't do it without the anointing because of course we are not supposed to be doing anything without the anointing so that's the word burden okay wow i didn't realize we was going you, you know i thought we was going to be in burden removing and yoke destroying but okay we'll keep going with burdens we'll keep going with burdens amen amen we will keep going with the word you know with the word burden and we'll stay we'll stay in one of my in one of my personally least favorite translations the king james hallelujah but we're called to we're called to remove burdens. Okay, I mentioned I mentioned in Galatians chapter six, it was verse five, for every man shall bear his own burden. So oh, okay, that's not where I intended to go. All right, but you know what? I'm going there. Thank you, Lord. See, even the apostle Paul delineates he delineates a difference that there are some burdens that we're supposed to carry. Okay? Now, once again, most of those burdens, it most, if not all, are going to be burdens placed on the inside. And then it's up to us to bring on the outside. In the Old Testament, sometimes burdens was a synonymous with prayer. You got a burden, which that would, that would agree with what I, you know, with what I'm contending, as far as, you know, it, you know, it, it, as far as um, burdens that we're supposed to carry. I'm gonna go to Galatians six. All right, I'm gonna start with Galatians chapter six. And uh, this time, this time I'll go to the Amplified Classic. Brethren, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, you who are spiritual. Who are responsive to and controlled by the Spirit should set him right and restore and reinstate him without any sense of superiority and with all gentleness keeping an attentive eye on yourself lest you should be tempted also okay okay bear one another's burdens and troublesome moral faults and in this way, fulfill and observe perfectly the law of the Messiah and complete what is lacking in your obedience to do it. For if any person thinks himself to be somebody too important to condescend to shoulder another's load, when he is nobody of superiority except in his own estimation, he deceives and deludes and cheats himself. But to let every person carefully scrutinize and examine and test his own conduct and his own work. He can then have the personal satisfaction and joy of doing something commendable in itself alone without resorting to boastful comparison with his neighbor. For every person will have to bear his own little load of oppressive faults. Mmm. Okay. Okay. So there are burdens we're supposed to remove, okay? And there are burdens, there are burdens that we got to bear, all right? But there's a biblical way to do it, all right? Honestly, if you pray in the Holy Ghost, if you pray, you know, pray in the Spirit, if you pray in other, in other tongues, 
talk about privately, honestly, you are really you are really going to be in the, in a better position to properly bear those burdens. You're going to know what to do with those burdens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's see here. I, let me let me uh, let me go back here. Um, I'm, I'm staying in the New Testament, okay? Um, uh, you know, 2 Corinthians 12, 16 says, But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Okay. Now, not only are we supposed to remove burdens, we're not supposed to put burdens we're not supposed to put burdens on others. All right? All right. But there are burdens that we need that that uh, that we're allowed to carry. There just are. Okay? Um Let's go to Let's go to the Revelation chapter 2 verse 24. Okay? This is uh this is this this is Yeshua speaking, you know, uh telling telling the apostle John what to write to 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 the to the uh, messianic community in in um in Philadelphia. Revelation 2:24. But unto you I say and unto the rest in Thy Thyatira Oh, no, I'm sorry, not Philadelphia, Thyatira. Philadelphia was in the third chapter. This is the second chapter. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not, as you know, as have not uh, this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you no other burden. Okay. Now, burden in this case is baros in the Greek. Baros, okay. Um, a weight. A weight. You know, Hebrews 12 talks about removing those weights. There are weights and burdens that we remove ourselves. We remove those weights ourselves by exercising our faith, obeying God. Okay. We're responsible for that. And some and, and sometimes there are burdens. Sometimes there are burdens that the brethren, you know, needs to remove from another from another person. That happens. That happens. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? Um, because the Holy Spirit, uh, circumstance, the Holy Spirit uh, directed a different way. All right. We've been with burden remover. Say with me, I'm a burden remover and a yoke destroyer. We've been on the burdens, so that means our next episode, Lord willing, will be on the yoke. Okay, which is just fine. Which is just fine, because, I, you know, I believe a lot of people, especially in the Western world, probably wouldn't understand a yoke. What a physical yoke is, and and a significance but lord willing we'll delve into that in the next episode episode 52 so having said that if you have not if you're not fully caught up yet why don't you go ahead and do so and if you're watching this after the fact if you're watching this on demand and there's other episodes that are recorded after this you have my blessing to continue on unless the holy spirit is having you stop to reflect on burden you know there's probably people that are hearing this and for the first time realize that there is actually such a thing as a godly burden so perhaps after listening to this episode I've, you know whether you're watching this live or you know you're watching this on demand listen to this on demand perhaps it would be wise to Reflect on that. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you more revelation on the burdens that come from that that come from the Father. Okay. 
Jesus bore our burdens. And if we're in Christ and we're following his example, there's going to be burdens that we need to take off, off of other people too. Okay? Um, just ask any intercessor. That's really intercession. All right. Well, that's enough for me. All right. I love you. I'm Jubilee James, the Overcomer Brother. I will return to you at the appointed time. Class is now dismissed.